Welcome to Mimika TV. I'm your host, Mimika Cooney. I'm honored to be with you on this journey towards empowering you to succeed in faith, leadership, and business. If we're willing to step out with him into that scary place to what, what I call a God dare, because I really believe God is dropping those little seeds, those ideas, those thoughts, those that crazy thing where you just go, God, this makes no sense. And I'm not equipped to do it. There's no way. What happened with me with that first book was definitely God daring me to step out of my comfort zone, do the thing I was not equipped to do, because if, if, if he calls you to it, he'll equip you to do it. And I learned that very, very clearly in my own life. And I've just seen it in so many other people's lives. If, but it's you've got to take that first step of trust. Welcome to Mimika TV. I'm your host, Mimika Cooney. Today, we're talking about how to do the impossible with God. Kate Battistelli is the living proof that God can and will use anyone if they're willing. Kate experienced infertility, miscarriage, and an abortion at age 18, and four failed adoption attempts, which all wrecked havoc on her life. Kate had a life-changing experience as a young actress in New York City, going from the understudy to starring as Anna in the Broadway national tour of The King and I, opposite Yul Brunner for more than a thousand performances. Kate and her husband laid down their careers in the Broadway theater in answer to their first God dare and moved out of New York City and into a life of homeschooling and a home business. As their daughter grew and began expressing her gifts in music and songwriting, they learned there was a bigger purpose in leaving their careers than they had ever could have imagined. Kate is the mother of Grammy award-winning Christian recording artist, Francesca Battistelli. Kate is a natural encourager and believes in people's ability to change the world. So welcome, Kate. I am so excited to talk to you today. Thank you, Mamika. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I love your story and I love the fact that your daughter is super talented because I've been listening to the music like forever. My daughter and I, who's eight, we love putting her music on there and we've done figure skating to her songs and it's just super encouraging. So that is so amazing how you could um, really follow that. Those, as you mentioned, God Dare, because this is something we're going to talk about a lot. You okay. have your new book called The God Dare. Totally love the title, which is what really got me excited about interviewing you because it's something I think we really need to hear more of in today's society. Because wouldn't you say, Kate, that a lot of people are getting a little lax in what they do nowadays and maybe God's talking to them, but they're a little, little scared or maybe don't feel equipped to do what they want to do today? I think both of those things, but also I think we just kind of get stuck in our comfort zone, particularly in the U.S. where for, for many of us, life is good, life is nice, you know, things are working just great. So why kind of step out and do that scary thing that God might be nudging you? Well, I, I'm certain he is nudging you to do. Definitely. I mean, well, your, your story, I mean, we, I read over a little bit and I really love the idea of it, that you were actually a working actress. Totally mm -hmm. love Brenner. Like you Brenner. The fact he's got no hair is just hilarious. <laughs> uh, or, that's always uh, what, how I remember him. But um, so, I mean, that must have been amazing because as an artist, a performing artist, that must be like, that was the dream, right? To be a, an artist and to be on the stage. Then all of a sudden God sort of starts shifting you. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, absolutely. That was my dream for years. I, I grew up always wanting, always knowing I could sing, never really knowing where that was going to fit in. But then when I discovered theater, that became my love. I grew up in New Jersey. And so New York was just 30 minutes away. So it was easy to start going in and auditioning. And, you know, you start working as an actress with, with the very lower things like children's theater and regional theater and all that, which is all great. But eventually I was able to connect with someone who recommended me to go out for the understudy of, for the part of Anna in The King and I, which was wonderful. I was 26. I thought, this is great. It's a national tour. I'm going to earn some money. I know I'll never get to perform the role, but hey, it's great experience, good on the resume. So I go out and I'm doing the show in the chorus for a few months. And, you know, during the day, I'm often practicing with a stage manager because you need to know your part backwards and forwards. Typically, an understudy is basically just an insurance policy for the producer, just in case something happens. Well, about three months into the run of the show, the leading lady got sick. And I went into the theater one night at 715. Now, this is back in 1981. So there's no cell phones. There's no computers. There's no way for anyone to contact me during the day. And I was out with friends shopping and... But I come into the theater at 7.15 for an 8 o'clock show, and the, the stage manager grabs me by the shoulders and says, she's sick and you're on. 
And I had 45 minutes to do this gigantic role with this huge star. I was terrified, but I learned very early on that sometimes you just have to do it afraid. So I went on and did the show. She ended up having pneumonia and was out for two weeks. So I got to do the show with Yul Brynner for two weeks. And I thought, wow, this is awesome. But then she came back to the show and I went back to the chorus because that's just what you do. But interestingly, they did not get along really well. So a few weeks later, they, she, they ended up buying out her two-year contract and giving me the part, which was wow. just <laughs> shocking because that doesn't happen. I mean, Yul Brynner was a huge star in those days. He could have had his pick of any actress in New York or LA or anywhere in the world, and he picked me. I mean, I was... I think I brought youthfulness to the show, which which I think he liked, but it was just one of those crazy God things. Now, this is before I knew the Lord. I was 29 when I came to know the Lord, so it was a little bit later in life for me, and it's it just sort of was a prophetic, I see it as a prophetic picture of what God was doing in my life to just sort of lift me up out of obscurity, give me this huge role, but then after about three years, about a thousand performances. I met my husband on the show. We literally fell in love across the footlights. He joined as the assistant conductor. So we met, fell in love (laughs) and we got married and then, um, had our, then we got saved after we got married the same night, both of us together, which was really neat. And then had our daughter. And then the Lord just started working on our hearts. He was calling us out of that world, asking us to lay down our lives, what we'd worked all our lives for and walk into the unknown with him, kind of like Abraham. I mean, not really, but just leaving everything you know behind and going to work, to a place where he'll show you. He doesn't. He kind of tells you about it, but he doesn't really make it all clear. It was it was really an act of obedience for my husband Mike and I. But we we did it, and and it changed our it changed the trajectory of our lives. Because I know had we stayed in New York, we we were both doing well. We had good careers going. Our our agents thought we were crazy. Our friends all thought we were absolutely insane. To why would you lay down good careers to go? live in New Jersey and then Florida and follow the Lord. They just didn't understand it, but we knew, you know, as young Christians, the Lord was really beginning to just speak to our hearts. And it, it wasn't, he didn't speak to us. It wasn't a clear voice that we heard. It was just that uneasiness where you just know that, okay, something is not right here. And I've, I've got to find the balance. I've got to get the balance back with the Lord. Kind of like the old season. It's almost like I call it when the grace lifts. It's, you have a yes. grace for a season and then things flow. Then all of a sudden, strange things start happening. Things go wrong with the flow and it feels hard. And it's like, okay, God's saying, okay, this, this season's about to expire. Time to move on. So that must have been, you know, definitely, especially when you have that vision that you know God's called you to, but nobody else gets to see it. So what right. happened after that? So you moved away and then you kind of did something totally opposite, right? Something. Yeah. We just started a home business. We, I, as our daughter grew, our daughter, Francesca, we just have the one. As she started to grow, I began homeschooling, which made no sense because I don't have a college degree. I mean, none of it, not so much of my life just doesn't make any sense, but all of those things I look at as little, little God dares. The, the big ones are, are usually more, a little more world impacting than that. But still for me, that was a big thing. But I just, the more I read about it and researched it, I realized that was the path we were supposed to go on. So we did that for a while. We lived in New Jersey till she was about seven. And then we moved down to Orlando where she was raised, lived there for 20 years. And now we're here in near Nashville, Tennessee, because she's here and our four grandbabies are here. So got to be near the babies. Oh, yes, definitely. Well, I'll tell you, Nashville is is the music capital of the world now, right? It's just everybody is connected there, which is so wonderful. So that must have been an amazing thing because what, you know, obviously as we look back now, and I'm a mom of three as well, and I can understand that sometimes God is challenging me to make choices that I can't necessarily see or and as I'm, as my kids, my eldest is 20 and the youngest is eight, I'm starting to realize that some of those choices were for them. So do you feel mm-hmm. that was kind of like God is asking you to step out of your comfort zone? I mean, being a homeschool teacher, you know, that's not what you signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. So how do you feel like if we had to relate this to, to help other people, how do you recognize that this is, this is God daring you to take a step and it's not just some crazy idea that you, you, you woke up with one morning? Well, I think particularly with our children, God is always looking down the generations. You know, we tend to think it's about just about us and, and, and our lives, but God is looking at our kids and grandkids and great grandchildren. He's seeing years and years down the road that we can't see. So he knew the plan for Francesca's life 
well, before I was born. I mean, that was all set, that was set in stone. So it was just up to us to kind of figure it out. It took us a little bit of time to, to get it, to understand fully what he was doing. But even when she was little, he began just showing me these little glimpses that, all right, there's something more here. And a lot of times I think it's just walking in trust following the the direction God's giving you one day at a time. You can't jump too far ahead and just doing what's he telling me to do today. What's the, you know, what am I supposed to do this year with my child or with my life or with my job and not try to get too far ahead of God? Because I think he will show you if we're willing to listen, to press in, to pray, and then let him start begin to show us those things. So kind of like it always feels a little uncomfortable at first, right? Because wouldn't you say that um, it's that saying, you know, God uh, equips the called. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't call the chosen. He he, right. equips, the, he equips us in the process. I know I'm totally right. messing that one up. But pretty much how that is the whole point, right? It's not meant yeah. to feel like we, oh, I got this. I can do this. Well, because w- if we've got it and we can do it, what do we need God for? So yes, he he calls, he equips the called. He doesn't call the equipped. How something, I know we I both kind of know what happened. <laughs> Someone will correct. That's exactly true. And if we're willing to step out with him into that scary place to what what I call a God dare, because I really believe God is dropping those little seeds, those ideas, those thoughts, those that crazy thing where you just go, God, this makes no sense. And I'm not equipped to do it. There's no way. For me, it was writing my first book. I wasn't an author. I don't have a college degree. Actually, I went to four colleges in two years, didn't graduate from any of them, but I knew I wanted to do theater and music and all that. So it was it just none of it made sense. I didn't have a publisher. I had no platform, nothing. But God just kept pressing that on me. And finally, I said, OK, God, I give up. And I found a friend who was a writing coach, which I didn't even know was a thing because I knew nothing about that world. But I stepped into it. I showed her my idea. She said, yes, this is a book. We're gonna, you're going to I'm going to help you write it and we're going to get it published. And she did. And I did. And it you know, it just led to this next book called The God Dare. And I think what happened with me with that first book was definitely God daring me to step out of my comfort zone, do the thing I was not equipped to do, because if, if, if he calls you to it, he'll equip you to do it. And I learned that very, very clearly in my own life. And I've just seen it in so many other people's lives. If, but it's, you've got to take that first step of trust. So what would you say if we had to sort of break it down and, you know, what actionable tips could everyone take today? So would you say to kind of start like testing things or, you know, writing them down or how, how is that like if someone's feeling like they're hearing something? Because <clears throat> I think many of us don't want to make a mistake. So right. what do we do in that first instance? Well, I think you obviously need to pray and and get and ask the Lord to give you confirmation. Get some good counsel. If you've got mature Christians around you, if you've got a pastor that you know and and trust and loves you, talk to them. Get don't don't just go by your own feelings, but let the Lord bring you some help and bring you some confirmation. Because he will. He knows we're scared. He knows that we're frightened to do the thing he's calling us to do. So just I think those are the things that you can do to to help you and just really listen for his voice. Because he'll speak in many different ways. You know, sometimes it's through a dream, sometimes it's through a vision. Now, I've never had any visions. I've had dreams that the Lord's spoken to me, but and I've never heard him speak audibly, but I've heard him speak in my spirit where it's very clear that, okay. I know that's the Lord. And I'll always ask my husband for confirmation. So if if you're married and you have a spouse, talk to them about it. But you know, you don't want to step out and do a crazy thing on your own. You want to know for sure that it's God. And I think he wants us to, to, to get that confirmation from him. So I think it's perfectly good to ask for that. Yeah. Cause I think when we hear that, we sometimes we question, is it me? Is it God? But that's the whole point is to understand, you know, and, and sort of look and search. And I think, I don't know about you, but I always find God sends me on a, on an adventure, like on a treasure hunt. He wants me to dig. He wants yes. me to look for things because he wants me to test the, you know, like what is it that he wants to show me? And sometimes that's not necessarily the destination, but the process. Right. And it's like how, where he's getting you. Like you talk about books, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I know I've written before. <laughs> I always say having, writing a book is like having a baby. It's all this excitement in the beginning, then the nausea sets in. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is so, so, so tired. I'm never going to get this done. And then when you're about to birth the book, it's the most painful. But once it's done, it's like, oh, that was so great. Can we do it again? <clears throat> yes, exactly. And it's like, it's the same thing with life, right? 
Yeah. Kind of and the same sense. with raising children. I mean, you have to dig deep to find out what their calling is. And I, I learned that with Francesca. I had to <laughs> dig very deep. And I talk about that in my first book because it's that's more of a parenting book. Parenting, you know, just 15 different principles that we use to be intentional raising our daughter to find her purpose. Because I, when I, I was raised in the 50s and 60s, and it just was different back then. It was kind of parents were more like, just figure it out. You'll, you'll figure out your life, which I did eventually. It took me a long, a long time and I made a lot of mistakes to get there. But we knew from early on, we were going to be intentional with her. We were going to tell her from the time she was little, you're a world changer. God does not have you on this planet randomly. You are here for a purpose and we're going to help you figure that out. So I think for parents, that's a really important thing to do, to not be afraid to dig deep with God and ask him sh to show you what is the purpose, especially if your kids are little, what are these kids on this planet to do? Because it's, it's not just about us. It's about them and their children. Definitely. And everything is continued, right? Especially the whole, it comes down to being faithful, right? And God gives you something you think is little, but then it starts to step up and he gives you more. So yeah. what other tips could you offer us? Like in terms of care, we know we've heard about that God's challenging us to do this. Mm -hmm. we, we've looked for confirmation. What's the other thing that you would do next? I think you just have to step out. You're not going to have all the answers. It's not, you're not going to have everything laid out for you you're going to have to just do it afraid. I mean, that's just how I've seen it in my life over and over. It's, it's never, it, it, for me, it doesn't ever really change. It's always kind of, okay, Kate, do this crazy thing. And I'm like, all right, Lord, I guess if you're, if I've gotten the confirmation and you're really telling me to, we have to be willing to move out of our comfort zones because that's going to just keep you stuck. That's going to keep you ordinary. And I think God wants us to lead extraordinary lives. He wants us to change the world. Now, it's not always going to be in a gigantic way. It might just be living like Jesus lived in the, in the small sphere, doing, you know, being willing to forgive, being willing to live your life with integrity, being willing to love those who have treated you poorly. All those things that we forget about that Jesus talked about. I mean, to me, every word Jesus spoke was a God dare. He dares me with everything. You read the Beatitudes. Those are, those are not easy things to do. It's not easy to wash the feet of someone who has hurt you. It's, it's not easy to go over to a neighbor and share about Jesus. But those are the things we, we think that it, I think sometimes we just mistakenly think, I have to do this big gigantic thing for God. But that big gigantic thing may just be, loving the people around you, raising your children to know and love the Lord and follow the Lord. Um, just, just all, just being obedient to the word, to what Jesus said to me, that's the biggest God dare of all is actually living like the following the example that he set. Definitely. And I would say, I mean, I'm sure you'd agree that God isn't going to expect you some, to go from zero to like huge without <laughs> the steps in between. You know, I think it's, he's kind enough to give us that grace to know that, you know, we, in order for us to take those bigger steps of faith, we kind of take these little baby steps, right? Absolutely. And another thing I want to say, you know, I, I, I did not live my life perfectly. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. Like you mentioned in the beginning, at 18, I got pregnant. I had an abortion. This is in 1972 before Roe v. Wade. Yet God still offered me his salvation, his redemption, when I repented and asked for forgiveness, and I know there's a lot of women that carry that burden, that and and that can that can prevent you from doing those things God has told you to do, just because you think I can't, I have this burden on me. That and women, I held this secret for 46 years. I did not tell anyone other than my husband and maybe two friends, because I was I had such guilt and shame, and I. I I feel so strongly for the women that have this same secret that they've carried. One out of three women, and which means one out of three men. So when you're sitting in your church and you're looking down the row, just figure one out of three of us have had an abortion, which is an awful thing. But at the same time, God redeemed it in my life and he can redeem it in yours. But you have to be willing to let go of the guilt and shame and just just move forward with God with wherever he's going to take you. Cause it's a secret that just weighs you down. It starts eating you alive from the inside. And I finally, last summer, that was my, my most recent big God dare when I was in, in the middle of writing my book and God just started being very clear with me. You need to put that chapter in the book. I was, no, I'm not going to do it. Yes, you are. And he just kept on me and I knew, okay. And I talked to my husband about it, talked to my daughter because I hadn't told her and she's in her thirties. I'd never told her because I was so ashamed. And, but I 
I obeyed and I did it. And I believe it'll be, I'm just hopeful it will bring some healing and some freedom for other women to go, well, she, she was able to, to talk about it and it, and I, you know, God didn't strike me dead. So here I am. And, and, you know, I'm just hopeful that it can help relieve some of that burden of guilt that so many women carry. Definitely. And that's the thing is it's taking the risk of putting yourself out there because we think, you know, the power of sin is in, is, is in its secrecy. And it's amazing how when you just let it go and you, and you actually say it or you put it out there, you're like, oh, that doesn't have any hold on me. Now I can actually right. move forward. And I think that's, you know, the lie the enemy likes to tell us is that you can't do this until you're equipped. You can't do this until you're educated. You can't do this until you have the experience. And that just keeps us stuck. So what would you say would be, if we had to like wrap it up into, what would be that big God dare tip that you want to give everybody? Just really be willing to listen and follow through and do that scary thing that he's telling you to do. Because typically if it's, if it's God, it's going to take you out of your comfort zone. Just don't be afraid to move out of there. Don't be afraid to, it's going to take work. Typically it's probably going to, some God dares happen right away, you know, they just are quick, like Queen Esther. Well, it wasn't that quick, but she was brought to that position for a specific reason to save her nation. And it took her a little bit, but her cousin Mordecai was able to get her to the point where she saw, okay, I need to do this for, I need to risk my life for my nation. And it worked out beautifully. Sometimes it's, it's in a smaller time frame. Sometimes it's years. It may be God calling you. I want you to go into this field and it's going to take years of study. So it's just sort of finding out what is God calling me to do and then asking him to equip you because he will. If you're obedient and you follow through and you, and you say yes to that scary thing, then it's his job to help you, help you accomplish it. We know we can't do it on our own strength. So I would just say really just have the courage to step out to do the thing God's telling you to do. Definitely. Well, that's great encouragement because we just need to take that one little tiny little step and God will show up. You're like, okay, God, you said you're going to be there. So I'm going to take the leap of it. And it's amazing how he does come through. He does. Well, would you be willing to pray with our audience? Because oh, we sure. love to be able to be activated in this. Um, and that, and I know my audience loves these, these prayers. So yeah, go for it. Sure. I would love to. Lord, I just, I thank you so much for this opportunity just to pray for these precious listeners, God, the men and the women that are listening to this podcast. And Lord, I know you've dropped these little seeds in their hearts, and I ask that you would give them the courage and the confirmation to know that this is you and that, yes, you're going to guide them every step of the way, that you're going to show them exactly what to do. You're going to bring, you're going to work everything out in your perfect timing and in your perfect plan. And I I just ask God that give them the courage to say yes to whatever it is you're asking them to do, Lord. And, and especially for any of those women that are women or men that have a secret that they've held on to for years, I ask that you give them the courage to expose that to, because when they do, it will remove every bit of its power. So Lord, I just ask that you bless every listener and just give them that courage and that ability and desire to say yes to you and to step out in Jesus precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And it's always nice to be able to have someone stand in in agreement with you because, you know, we feel like we can be alone sometimes in in our thoughts, but knowing that somebody else has gone through this. And that's why I love books and testimonies because there's power in the the testimony, right? So I really appreciate that. But tell everybody, how can they get in touch with you? You know, where can they find you online? Well, I've got a website, katebattistelli.com. Super simple. All my social media is just at Kate Battistelli or on Facebook, Kate Battistelli is my author page. So pretty easy to do. And then we have a little special offer that we're doing right now with the God Dare that just to give you a chance to try before you buy, we have a little text to number and it just comes right to our house. It doesn't go anywhere weird or spammy. And my husband comes to his computer. So um, you can just text God Dare, all one word, no spaces, G-O-D-D-A-R-E to 44144 and you'll get the forward by my daughter Francesca the introduction and the first three chapters and there's a lot of good meat in there to so you get a chance to get a real sense of what the book's about if it's something you want to go further with definitely well we'll definitely we'll have your links to your website and all your social media platforms they definitely can connect and I know as a fellow author <clears throat> we really appreciate it when readers rate and review so if you have read um, The God Day please go on Amazon and give Kate a review because it really <laughs> does help to get the book out there because this is an amazing content that I know a lot of people and then share it as well which you know if you've enjoyed what Kate had to say today make sure to share today's podcast episode on whatever platform you're watching 
hit those little buttons, share it on social media because there's lots of people who need to be encouraged by her testimony and her story. So definitely go ahead and do that. And if you've had any aha moments um, or we would love to hear your comments, anything you've learned or any questions, I'd love to keep our our conversation going past these uh, conversations we have with our guests and then also make sure to reach out to her and let her know that you heard her or saw her on Mamika TV. Uh, we really appreciate giving our guests some love. Um, and if you want more free resources that I only share with my newsletter community, go to mamikakuni.com and I have some resources like a free ebook, Mindset Makeover, as well as um, some other digital resources and screensavers we give you. So you can meditate on the word every time you look at your phone. So go to mamikakuni.com. But I got to say, thank you so much, Kate, for sharing your wonderful story. I'm so excited to read your book and I totally love the whole concept. I know it's just going to really excite and enthuse a lot of people to really step out in faith. So we're going to get some amazing testimonies, I'm sure. I hope so. Thank you so much for having me, Mimika. It was a pleasure. Well, welcome. Until, every, until next time, everyone, take care. Are you ready to build a platform with a purpose? Come to mamikakuni.com and download your free checklist, How to Build Your Platform in 30 Days.